Hey there, this is Gavin Nielsen and uh, happy Thanksgiving. Um, this is another important video. This time we're going to talk about how to physically model actuation of a multi-body dynamics joint. Um, so let's kind of jump right in. Last time we talked about frame sensors, which is great. Um, I'm going to delete some of those things now because we don't, we don't need them right at this point. Um, so I'm going to delete those, I'm going to delete those. We'll leave this around, we'll probably get back to it, uh, back to it a little bit later when we want some, some truth signals. Alright, so what are we doing here? We can measure things, that's great, and we can actuate these joints with the prescribed motion. And remember, we had these ramps feeding in, and they were saying, you know, uh, go one, uh, ramp up with a slope of one, the, um, unit was radians so one radian per second and it, you know we spin at this but in reality we don't actually apply a prescribed motion to something we give it a stimulus and it responds it has a response so what we actually need to do is be able to give something a torque but the torque has to be able to push back on us to to make it a a real physical model so here's what we're going to do. We're going to single out a joint. We're going to do this one on the right hand side first. Um, they're, they're exactly the same, so we really just, just need to do one. We're going to move it over a little bit and get rid of this prescribed motion business and then give ourselves a little bit more room. Okay, now you recall, I'm zooming in a little bit here by rolling the mouse button, um, you recall that we had this input Q, and that was for the prescribed motion. So our actuation was torque automatically computed and the motion provided by input. So what we need to do actually is the torque provided by input and the motion automatically computed. Because that's the, in, in reality, we're gonna supply a torque. But we can't leave it at just that because uh, we actually, like I said, we want to push on it and we need to give it the ability to push back on us. And so I'll show you uh, what we're going to do here. Then we're going to add, we're going to, uh, in the sensing tab, we're going to check velocity as an output. So now I have torque as an input and velocity as an output. So how does this all shake out? Well, different than you'd expect. Um, hide a couple quick things here. Um, so what we want to do is I'm going to go to the let's see foundation library in Simscape and go to the mechanical section and get a mechanical sensor. We're going to get a torque sensor. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is we're going to get a source, mechanical source. And again, this is Simscape foundation library mechanical mechanical sensors and source. I need an angular velocity source. And uh, this probably will strike you kind of weird because of the fact that we are wanting to supply torque and this joint has a torque input and a velocity output and yet we have a velocity source and a torque sensor. So I'm going to connect these things up kind of the only way you can and uh, you'll see I think as we go why I'm doing it. So rotate this around um, we'll connect the torque sensor output into the torque input of the joint and then rotate that around and then I'm going to take the velocity output of the joint and connect that into the uh, velocity source and I'm going to connect these two things together so they can push on each other. Okay, now I've done something kind of interesting. Uh, I have basically two handles, you might say, to uh, a circuit, part of a circuit I can connect to, where I can push and pull on either side, and it will push and pull into a joint, into this joint. Um, so let's just kind of walk through, but in order for you to remember how, kind of what I mean by the, the connection, um, I want to add one more thing to this, because I think it'll, it'll help you... Um, see what I'm driving at. So I'm going to go into Simscape Electronics and Rotational actu Actuators and just grab a DC motor. Okay. 
If you notice this is a little bit just a thing to note um, as soon as I turn this around, you'll notice that um, this is a little different color. It's kind of a, a lighter green. This is sort of a darker um, green. Uh, that's because they're different domains and you can't connect them up to each other because one is the multi-body domain, uh, this one's the multi-body domain, and this one is the mechanical rotational domain. But you can hook them up when you have the right, the right kind of components, which now we do. So we have a DC motor here. Now before we connect that DC motor, let's just talk about what's going on here. This DC motor is going to have a voltage source. Uh, let's see, it's going to be a DC voltage source. Sorry. DC voltage source. Right, like that. And I'm just going to put 6 volts DC into it. Get this kind of good looking here. I uh, need a voltage reference. Let's see, it's an electrical reference. <clears throat> and I'll hide that guy. Format. Show blocking. Good. Alright. So, now we have something that looks pretty familiar. And I want to talk about what's going on here. Okay, well, the, we, we provide 6 volts DC to this DC motor. That DC motor then the voltage across the coils is going to have current go through the coils. The um, rotor is going to start turning or try to turn. Um, this joint is going to resist it. So this, these R and C's are going to connect up and basically grab this thing and twist. So it, at first it's not going to move though, right? Because this has inertia, the inertia of those wheels and the friction on the ground and everything else we've already modeled. So the first thing that, that's going to happen here is the energy kind of is going to energize this circuit. So we've, we've uh, poured current through the coils here. Then the torque, mechanical rotational torque here, is, is going to go around here. Now the torque sensor is going to sense the amount of torque placed on it by the motor. It's going to input that torque into the joint. So that's how we get the torque into the joint. Then we get the torque out of the joint by sensing the velocity and tell, basically telling the system to go at the velocity that it's going at. It's sort of a standing on your head kind of a deal here. Um, so you have to uh, trust me a little bit and think about it with me a little bit. Um, it's really just a feedback system. It just looks, looks funny because of the way things are, are designed in Simscape. Um, so what happens as we provide torque, it stimulates. The response is motion, or velocity that's, that's coming out. That velocity is going to change um, the overall position. And when we get to kind of our terminal velocity, or how fast, you know, when the, 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 the amount of torque goes down as we get to higher and higher uh, speeds for the motor, then they're going to start to balance. And then, um, then we'll get to a fixed a fixed speed. So let's uh, let's see if this works, right? Proofs in the pudding. So I need to add and tell this thing to be six volts. And we're going to go back and make sure that the motor matches our real motor. But uh, for the demonstration here, I just wanted to drop the default DC motor in, and you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, one other thing that I need to change from last time that uh, I think I forgot to change. Uh, I'm going to do that a little bit slower. Um, up here is the model configuration parameters, basically the solve settings. I'm going to click once on that. And there's a lot of different settings here. All we need, though, excuse me, is to go into the solver and pick automatic. We want the solver to decide what we're, we want the software to describe which solver we're going to use. Um, and another time we'll, we'll talk more about why you'd use one solver over another, but for our purposes, automatic is exactly what we want. So we'll say okay. All right, now this is good. Um, one more thing, I wanna make sure the other wheel is at zero. So there's no prescribed motion. In fact, the other, the other wheel is basically breaking. I'm telling it it's not allowed to move. And the wheel on the right is going to uh, 
the wheel on the right is going to be actuated with this DC motor. So I'm going to hit Control D. It's going to update here, and we've got to do our, our normal song and dance thing. So right click on PCB platform, show only this, zoom to that, rotate so we can see it well, and then um, we're going to show this and show the rear stabilizer and the wheels. These are things we care about. Okay. Good. All right. So this is going to drop. I'm going to slow it down to maybe uh, one eighth speed. And um, I believe it's the green, but uh, we'll, we'll see pretty quickly. So I'm going to hit start simulation here. Okay. So we are currently actuating the green, the and we're kind of dragging the blue around by how we're we're um, actuating with that DC motor. So there you have it. Um, we're going to easily copy this over, and I'll uh, show you the next time how we can kind of put this up in a nice package with a subsystem. Um, but for the moment, I think we'll, we'll call it good. And uh, this is our, our first multi-domain aspect because we've connected the multi-body domain and the modeling we've done there with a DC motor. Um, and actually, if you stop and think about it, there's actually three domains now because we have the multi Simscape multi-body stuff and we have the um, this different domain which is uh, mechanical rotational domain and we have um, the blue or electrical domain as well so we actually have three domains going here so i hope you enjoyed this uh, leave me some comments or uh, hit like and subscribe and thumbs up and all that good stuff i uh, hope you come back and see the next video soon and again happy thanksgiving <laughs>